I have spent my life searching for the answers that my father and my father's fathers failed to find. Who were the precursors? Why did they create the vast monoliths that litter our planet? How did they harness Eco, the life energy of the world? What was their purpose, and why did they vanish? I have asked the plants, but they do not remember. The plants have asked the rocks, but the rocks do not recall. Even the rocks do not recall. Every bone in my body tells me that the answers rest on the shoulders of a young boy. Oblivious to his destiny, uninterested in the search for truth, and rejecting of my guidance. And why would he want to listen to old Samus the Sage anyway? I'm only the master of Green Eco, one of the wisest men on the planet. <sighs> so it seems the answer begins not with careful research or sensible thinking. Nay, as with many of fate's mysteries, it begins with but a small act of disobedience. Hey! Uh, Jack, old green stuff told us not to come here. Continue your search for artifacts and eco. If the locals possess precursor items, you know what to do. Deal harshly with anybody who strays from the village. We will attack it in due time. What are we doing here anyway, Jack? This place gives me the creeps. Stupid precursor junk. Eek! What is that dark ooze? It sure don't look friendly. <gasps> the sage yaps on about the precursors that built this place all the time. Where did they go? Why did they build this crud? Now, I like precursor orbs and power cells as much as the next guy. But if you ask me, they must have been real losers. Wow! How did you do that? I think we're in trouble! Help! Man, that stung! I told you we shouldn't have come here, and you listened! What? I'm fine. I'm fine. What in green tarnation do you two want? We, we, we was, they was, I, I was... Don't tell me. Instead of heeding my wisdom, the two of you went mucking around in the only place that I told you not to go. Misty Island. That's right. And then And Daxter, you finally took a much needed bath, but in a bathtub filled with dark eco. Look, old man! Are you gonna keep yapping? Or are you gonna help me out of this mess? I'm gonna keep yapping. Because in my professional opinion, the change is an improvement. And besides, I couldn't help you if I wanted to. What? There's only one person who has studied Dark Eco long enough to have a chance at returning you to your previous form. Gal Acheron, the Sage. But he lives far to the north. Far, far to the north. Nobody has spoken to him in ages. I would teleport you there, but I can't do that either. None of the three Sages that maintain the other teleporter gates have seen fit to turn their ends on for quite a while. 
The only other way north is by foot through the Fire Canyon, but its volcanic soil is hot enough to melt precursor metal. You can't just walk through it. But you could fly over it if you had a zoomer equipped with a heat shield. I just happen to be working on such a thing at this very moment. All I would need is 20 power cells to give it enough energy to withstand the canyon's heat. Isn't that right, Daddy? Yes, Kira, that might work. But where are a boy and a half going to get 20 power cells? From the villagers. Most of them have a power cell or two stashed away somewhere. And even if they aren't willing to just give them away, greasing their palms with a few precursor orbs should do the trick. And I bet there are even more of them out in the wilds just waiting for some brave adventurer to find. Well, we've got the brave adventurer at least. Brave adventurer? You two couldn't find your way out of the village without training. Before you do anything else, you better go through the warp gate and get some practice on Geyser Rock. Uh, we won't find any more of that dark, gooey eco stuff, will we? Because I'd hate to fall in again and turn into you. Get in there before I turn you both into ferns. Well, all that's done, and that took, what, oh, six minutes. It's actually shorter than I thought it was. <laughs> oh, well, if we thought that was bad, just wait till we get to Jack 3. And if we think that's bad, just wait till we get to Kingdom Hearts 2. <laughs> well, what's going on, guys? My name is Mad Omega, and welcome to Let's Play Jack and Daxter. This device is a communicator. With it, my father and I can give you advice at any time during your quest. All the cutscenes talking and everything was over. Damn it, Kira. <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, Jack and Daxter for, uh, oh jeez, uh, PS2, the PS3, the PS Vita, and most recently, PS4, which is what I'm playing on right now. <laughs> gotta, gotta break in that capture card, you know. <laughs> this is, uh, this is a game that I've been planning on doing since before I even started Pokemon, so I'm very excited to get to this. Jack and Daxter is a favorite series, one of the favorite series of mine from the PS2 era, and, well, the PS2 is just my childhood in general, so... Yeah, you can say I'm a, I'm a bit excited. <laughs> anyway, let's get going here. These floating egg-shaped things are precursor orbs. Collect enough of them, and some of the villagers will give you a power cell in exchange. So basically, these uh, these eggs, these precursor orbs, are the uh, they're the currency in this game. They're our money. Uh, I guess I should quickly go over. Uh, controls in this game are pretty simple. X to jump, double jump. Yeah, pretty simple stuff. Uh, we'll be learning that as we go along, including some combat tactics up here. Press square, do a punch. Got a bit of reach to it, so it's good for closing the gap um, between you and an enemy, but uh, don't expect it to help too much in a group. Speaking of groups, press circle, you do a spin kick, which is great in groups, but uh, very short range. Alright, well, we got up here. This is a power cell, the most important precursor artifact you can find. You need to collect 20 of these so I can power the heat shield for your A-grab zoomer. Alright, so these are our important collectible MacGuffins for the game. Think of them as the uh, power stars from Mario 64 or uh, the Jiggies and Banjo-Tooie. Basically, Jack and Daxter had pretty humble beginnings. Before it turned into, well, what Jack 2 made it into, uh, it was a simple collectathon. And every single time we get a power cell, we are greeted to uh, Daxter doing a little dance for us. Yes, game, thank you for reminding me that you autosave. But, uh, let's beat a few more of these things up. Now, as I probably inadvertently showed off before, you can attack while in the air. So, spin kick while in the air. And spin kicking is actually very important. Very, very important. The game won't tell you this, but it's very important. Because it actually gives you a bit more air time, which lets you handle jumps quite a lot better than what you think you would. Take care of this thing. Then we got uh, these boxes here. Sometimes you'll want to hit things with a greater force. To break one of these boxes, you should jump in the air and then dive down onto it, hands first. All right. So to do a dive attack, we just jump, press square, hey, and break these boxes. Hey, you found one of my scout flies. I sent seven of them to each area to look for power cells, but the lurkers must have captured them all. So yeah, we can only break these boxes with a dive attack. And uh, we're gonna need to break these open to get some Kira scout flies back. Apparently they're looking for power cells, but the lurkers got to them. The lurkers being uh, a lot of the, the monsters that we saw in the opening cutscene. 
And when we get all seven in an area, Power Cell. So, uh, they're successful. Just, uh, the luck has got to them before they can come back. Wow! That last scout fly had a Power Cell. I'll bet if you collect all seven in each area, you can find even more Power Cells. Now, real quick while we're here, while we're on the subject of attacking, uh, what the game doesn't tell you about is crouching. Press any of the shoulder buttons, so L1 or R1, you can crouch. Press uh, square while crouching, and you do an uppercut. You can also do an uppercut by punching and then pressing jump directly after. Also, if you uh, duck while moving, you roll, jump while rolling, long jump, jump while ducking, high jump. So, pretty simple stuff. Shiny. That's Blue Eco, which contains the energy of motion. Blue Eco allows you to run fast, break boxes, and even activate some precursor artifacts when you get near them. Alright, so we've just been introduced to Eco. Eco pretty much serves as this game's power-ups. There's not many of them, but uh, we'll be utilizing them for a few things. Blue Eco here is my favorite. One, you move faster. And everything around you gets attracted to you. You also break boxes just by running near them. Notice how each blue eco cluster you pick up increases the time you can use its power. Yeah, faster movement is always a nice thing, although you do move pretty fast in that you kind of lose a bit of handling. We're not even in wheels and we're losing handling. Jesus Christ, Jack. <laughs> Let's keep going along here. Just ran through all these boxes because, yeah, when you're channeling blue eco, they don't need to touch boxes, they just break for you. Ah, now that there was green eco. We'll get a proper introduction to that a little bit ahead. But for now, we've got uh, more tutorials. This is a precursor door. It can only be opened by approaching the door while channeling blue eco through your body. So that's the other effect of Blue Eco. We can power up a lot of um, precursor technology by channeling Blue Eco and coming into contact with it, or coming near it. So it's more than just a speed boost. And we've got a lot over here. That's a Blue Eco vent. More concentrated than the floating clusters, this vent will give you a full charge of Blue Eco, letting you use it for the maximum time. So I should, probably should have pointed this out when we picked up Blue Eco earlier, but when you pick up Eco, you'll see a little meter down the bottom there that will gradually drain over time as you're channeling the Eco. Uh, clusters that we pick up on the ground just like before, they'll only fill it up a little bit, but go up... Whoops. Um... Oh, <laughs> uh, here's hoping I don't die. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that to happen! <laughs> and this is just the tutorial. Alright, I'm not in any danger. Yeah, um... Water is terrifying in this game. If you swim out too far, then, uh... Ugh, it's, it's scary stuff. <laughs> but, uh, I guess this brings me back to the clusters so I can better show this off. Clusters just, uh, fill it up a little bit. Whereas the vent we ran over before filled it up with a completely full charge, so... Those vents will come in handy if we can find them, but most of the time we'll just find little clusters around. Can I get to the door before it runs out? Yes! Another power cell. Go, Dax! Go! <laughs> right. Good work! The Blue Eco caused the door to open. With Blue Eco, you can breathe energy into all kinds of precursor artifacts that have lain dormant for years. Precursors basically being an advanced civilization that existed before the current one did. It's basically another case of ancient technology being more advanced than modern technology. Uh, there's not too much of that really, except for what we kept from the precursors, so we've been able to do something with it. Those little green balls of energy on the ground are a type of eco. Pick up 50 small green ecos, or one big green one to increase your health. So yeah, green eco is, well, it's your health. And I'm full, so it's not popping up here, but if you press any of the uh, triggers, you'll pretty much bring up your heads up display here. Now, up in the top left corner there is your health, which can be a little bit misleading. That 50 there is not the amount of lives we have. In fact, there are no lives in Jack and Daxa. That's how many pieces of green eco we have on us right now. 
You'll see that the heart there is segmented into three pieces. Um, if we get hit, we'll lose one of those pieces, but if we collect 50 pieces of green eco or one big piece of green eco, then uh, we'll get one of those pieces back. You can if we jump once, then jump again in the air to reach even higher ledges. Same as I've been doing that the entire time. Shut up. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> Freaking Tutorial Island. <laughs> Guys are rock, but better known as Tutorial Island. <laughs> yeah, if you have a full charge of 50 green eco pieces after your health is already full, then that's pretty much an extra hit for you. So you can get to a maximum of four. And we've got all the uh, progressor orbs in this area as well, so very nice. This will of course be a 100% run, so I'll be going for every single precursor orb in the game as well as every power cell. So, yeah, look forward to that. Got a nice shortcut back down here to the, uh, to the warp gate. Jump that to turn it on. And we won't be able to turn this on unless we collect all four power cells that are on this island, so make sure you've done that. Um, if you're ever losing track of them, you can go into the pause menu and it'll show you all the, uh, power cells you've yet to collect or have collected. Um, and of course on the side here you can see what button means what. So square button brings you to the power cell total. Uh, scout flies on triangle of course. The amount of precursor orbs you have on X. And your options. Speaking of options, there's no option for uh, subtitles in this game. So hence why I'm trying to stay as quiet as I can during cutscenes and dialogue. Although I probably do that anyway. <laughs> Anyway, through the warp gates. Ah, do I want to go to the Green Sage's hut? The Green Sage's hut, the Green Sage's hut, the Green Sage's hut, or the Green Sage's hut? I think I'll go to the Green Sage's hut. I think that's a good move. Good training, boys. But that's nothing compared to the challenges that lie ahead. Ah, then no problem. We got the moves, eh, Jack? We'd love to stay in chat, Big Green, but we're, uh, itching to get on with our adventures. Fine, fine. Adventure away, then. And while you're out adventuring, why don't you make yourself useful? My darn green eco-collectors are clogged up again. Head out to the far side of the beach and clear them out, why don't you? Follow the lamps. They'll take you right there. No. All of you. Get out of here! Yeah, Samus is basically the epitome of a uh, crushy old fart. <laughs> oh well. But basically, now we're free to go out into the world and just explore as we please, collect power cells in all of the areas, which, gotta say, back in the day, this game was very impressive because this is a seamless world. We got no loading times or anything like that. Just all connects very nicely. And this was pretty impressive back in, I think it was 2001, 2002, this game first came out. I know this was one of the launch titles of the PS2, so very impressive for that time. Eh? Coming here, we can actually talk to Kira. Hey, baby. What do you say you and I go cruising on this A-grab zoomer? Rule number one, I don't date animals. Ah, uh, you don't know what you're missing. <laughs> Listen, if you need something to keep you busy, my father always talked about an ancient precursor pipeline hidden deep underground. Some of these pipes end in vents from which eco flows freely, and some have been capped off so that the eco is sealed back. There must be a way to turn the capped vents on. I traced part of the pipeline back to the Forbidden Temple. Maybe you should look there for some type of switch. Which is exactly what I'm going to be putting near the top of my priorities list. Now, I think the game wants you to go out into Sandover Beach to start off with, given how that was the first place we were directed to by Samos, given that he wanted us to unclog his green eco vents. But there is actually one of these capped off eco vents out on the beach, and basically how I want to handle how I'm going to get power cells in this game is, I want to clear out an entire area the first time I get there. So I don't want to have to do much backtracking, I'll just let it flow that way. So I'm going to be heading to the Forbidden Jungle first. But uh, before that, may as well uh, talk to all the townspeople here, see what else we can uh, get. Oh, don't tell me that you two have problems as well. The first I hear of monster sightings near the village, and now this. See those gears up there, boys. See them? 
See how they're not moving? That means our village has no power. The eco beam coming from the jungle temple has been interrupted. And boys, everyone's too frightened to go out and, and find out what's happened. Did you pay the bill? Yeah. Hmm? Oh, 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 you're funny. Now look, if you two fix the eco beam, I'll give you a power cell. Oh, and, and another thing. If by any chance you're interested in making a contribution to my re-election campaign, I, I might be willing to part with yet another power cell. The minimum contribution is, a, oh, a very modest 90 precursor orbs. Keep that number in mind, because everyone who's going to ask for precursor orbs in exchange for a power cell is going to ask for 90. Well, almost everyone, but we'll get to that in a second. <laughs> Hey, this guy's got a scout fly in his house. Looks like scout flies are always in red boxes. This prick was hiding a scout fly from us. Yeah, um, the town here, of course, has its own collection of scout flies as well as power cells and orbs. So we want to go around and collect as many of those as we can. Now, we're not going to be able to get all of them now because, uh, as we saw with the mayor there, well, uh... Now, normally, whenever you're told about an objective that would would end up giving you a power cell, it's put up on this screen here as uh, one of the power cells you can see. For what he just said about redirecting the eco beams to turn on the town's power, that's not there. That's because that's technically part of the Forbidden Forest um, line of power cells. So, we're not going to be able to get everything just yet, maybe. I'll just go about this the way I need to. <laughs> well, uh, hello there, my dear boy. You've caught me at a most inopportune moment. Uh, I wish to set off on my journey yesterday, but I seem to be a spot short on the old precursor orbs. I would have pledged my word that I had 90 of them, but I gather that your young friend, you know, the little annoying, miserably ugly one, might have just pilfered them as a sort of a spot of fun. Anyway, uh, would you be kind enough to loan your dear old uncle 90 precursor orbs so he can get underway? I would offer you a power cell in return. Well, maybe I can get everything now. Eh, I can't quite remember. Because <laughs> like I said, some of them account toward other areas in which we'll actually be doing tasks. And that way over there is to the beach, I just wanted to get those orbs there. Another guy in here. Hey! Little furry dude! Oh, I thought for a moment you were my muse. You're what? Haven't you ever seen a muse before? It's a little glowing squirrel about your size, full of spunk, and crazy as a lark. Oh, I get it. Like a sidekick. As a matter of fact, without my muse, I just can't sculpt. But with her around, I see beauty in everything, you know? Right now, I couldn't chisel my way out of a box. I think she ran away to that misty island. Oh, I just hope she's all right. It's worth a power cell if you bring her back to me. Wait a minute. We are not going back to Misty Island. Are we? Oh, come on, Dax. This guy's muse is in danger. His muse, Dax. His muse. <laughs> More scat flies down here. As you can uh, always tell by the little annoying hum of theirs. One down here too. And I guess while I'm at here I can... No, I'll save that for the beach. Ugh. I really hate going out into water in this game. <laughs> it's scary, damn it. Just take my word for it. No, no, no! Spinning in the air is your friend. <laughs> One of your best friends, in fact. Now, there's another house around here. So pretty much what we're doing in the village here is just, well, getting objectives, really. And we don't really have to do any of this. And as we saw before, Samos and Kira gave us some as well. And later on, we'll be able to return to them and they might give us some more. But again, 
we technically don't need to do those. So I won't be returning to Samos and Kira. I'll just be showing off what I can, but I will at least talk to all the townsfolk just to give you guys an idea of what we'll be doing. Oh my, what a horribly sick little bird. <laughs> you don't look so good yourself, lady. Oh, sorry. I thought you were a spotted orange bellied rain frame. You know, yesterday I saw some terribly vicious creatures capture a mother flut flut near the beach. Now there's this poor little orphan egg sitting in a nest at the top of the cliff and I can't get to it. If you could climb up there and push it off, I've piled some hay down at the base to catch it safely. Do an old lady a favor and I'll give you a power cell. Let me get this straight. You want us to push oh an egg That's a off one. a cliff. Well, this lady is, uh, I'm not going to miss words. She's a bitch. <laughs> anyway, these things here. What a weird looking thing. I bet we can get this open if you power up with that zappy blue eco stuff. Thank you, Daxter, doing my job for me. Anyway, these things here, run near them with, uh, while you're chatting blue eco. And they'll give you a ton of precursor orbs. I want to be on the lookout for these. And wow, those boxes are just far away that some of the uh, metal grating of them hasn't loaded in properly. <laughs> and look, some of the uh, precursor orbs look a lot edgier. <laughs> uh, oh, reducing polygon count by the distance. <laughs> But uh, on that note, I think you guys have got an idea for what exactly we'll be doing. So next time on Let's Play Jack and Daxter, I'm going to be finishing things up here, well, what I can at least, for now here in uh, Sandover Village. And then we're going to be heading off to the Forbidden Jungle to, uh, well, to get stuff done. So thank you all so much for watching. Until next time, guys, my name is Matt Omega, and I'll see you guys later.